Hi, I'm Claire Furness, author of The Year of the Rat. The Year of the Rat tells the story of a teenager, Pearl, whose mum has just died at the start of the book in childbirth, and the baby, uh, who's Pearl's little sister, survives. So the book starts with Pearl in this very difficult situation. She's just lost her mother. She's got this new baby sister who she blames for her mum's death. And it's really the story of Pearl's year following that, um, that terrible shock and the grief that she's feeling and uh, struggling with her relationship with the baby and with her stepdad um, and coping with all those difficult things and all the emotions that come with that um, and also kind of dealing with the practical side of being a teenager and friendships and falling in love potentially. Um, and uh, yes, it just tells the story of her year. Well, I was pregnant myself when I started to write the book and um, so I think in some ways it was an externalisation of some of the fears that I had at that time um, and the more I thought about it that kind of seed the idea of the mother dying and the baby surviving and the older sister having to kind of deal with that situation um, the more possibilities seem to open up both in terms of the plot and also in terms of the themes um, I think that um, the, the kind of core of the book is about the fact that life does go on after somebody you love dies almost whether you want it to or not and the baby seemed like a very real kind of symbol of that ongoing life um, so that was where the seed of the idea came from I think. I knew right from the start that the baby would need to have a nickname because I knew that it would be impossible with Pearl feeling the way that she does feel about the baby for her to call her by her name, um, at least in her own mind. And that was just kind of there in the back of my mind that I needed to think of the nickname. Um, and I knew it needed to be something about the way that the baby looked. And actually it just literally as I was writing um, the first few scenes, that image of the um, the kittens that I refer to in the book um, looking like little rats and that being the image that comes into Pearl's mind as she looks at the baby, it just sort of came into my mind and I knew straight away that that was the perfect kind of image and nickname for the baby. There's quite a few of the characters that I think have aspects of people who I know in them. Um, for example, Molly, uh, Pearl's best friend, um, has characteristics that remind me of a good friend of mine from when I was a teenager. Um, but the characters who really, I think I could say, are based on someone that I know are um, Mr S, the lovely retired teacher, who um, definitely bears more than a passing resemblance to my favourite teacher from school, um, and who I'm still in touch with now, and who is now retired and looks after his grandson. and. Um, also, Verity, uh, the young girl who appears at the end of the book, um, is definitely uh, a kind of composite of my daughter and my son. But I didn't really realise that until I had written her. Um, she came very naturally onto the page. She sort of appeared behind a door when I opened it. I hadn't really planned on her being there and um, kind of took over that particular scene and it felt very easy to write and it wasn't until after I'd finished that scene that I realised it was because she was, in fact, my daughter and my son. <laughs> That's a really hard question to answer, actually. I first had the idea um, six years ago now, um, but I haven't been solidly writing for six years. Um, it probably took, uh, in the end, um, putting everything together about a year, I would say, um, I wrote different, lots of different scenes at different times and then spent three very intensive months at the end kind of pulling everything together. So, yes, yeah, difficult to say exactly, but it was quite a long process. That's a really hard one um, because I think Pearl's a very ordinary sort of teenager, so I think in a way she'd have to be somebody unknown because um, I don't think 
um, a star would be right for the role. I think, yeah, it would be some unknown actress who'd, who'd play her. Well, funnily enough, one of the people who uh, kept popping into my head when I was writing the character of Mum uh, was Alex Kingston, who plays River Song in Doctor Who, because um, she looks very like how I imagine Stella to look with her beautiful curly hair and she also has that sort of air of confidence and authority and kind of not standing for any nonsense and um, yes yeah, a kind of sense of humour that I think yeah just would be very appropriate for the role. It was my mum really, uh, she's a very avid reader herself um, and she read to me all the time as a child, she always gave me lots of books, found books that I would be interested in and that I loved and I've, you know, she really inspired my love of reading and books and also has always sort of encouraged my writing and that side of things and she still does now and in fact she's been very supportive in practical and sort of emotional ways while I've been writing the book so um, Yes, definitely my mum. Oh, there are so many, it's really hard to choose just one. Um, but there was a book that I loved um, as a teenager, um, and it's quite uh, an unknown sort of book, I think. It's called Bilgewater by Jane Gardam. And I just, it was one of those books that I read as a teenager, and I just loved it. It's about a very kind of quirky character, and um, she just has, it's the voice I think that I loved about it. Um, she's a bit of an outsider, a bit of a kind of awkward teenager um, and um, it was actually, I didn't know at the time, but it was written almost as a YA book before YA existed and perhaps that's part of why it kind of um, appealed to me so much at that age. But um, yeah, all the books I love I think do have that very strong voice in them, a lot of them have that kind of quirky aspect to them as well and uh, yes, I thoroughly recommend it. I love to read all sorts of things, I really, I like to have a lot of variety actually in what I read. Um, I do read uh, young adult books, um, I love Patrick Ness's books, I love Meg Rose off as well. Um, and I also read a lot of adult books and um, yeah, I've recently read Hilary Mantel's Bring Up the Bodies which I just love and um, Maggie O'Farrell and um, yeah, quite, I, I, but I like to read across the, across the board and I, you know, I still go back to reread old favourites as well. Um, I don't have a huge amount of time for um, for hobbies, but um, I love going to the theatre. I really, I really do. I love. Um, I, lo I actually, I, I love kind of thinking now about the writing side of that. I, I really like writing dialogue myself, and I'd love to have a go at writing play scripts sometime. I think, but also I just love the kind of energy of being at, at the theatre and seeing an amazing kind of stage production. Um, I also um, go running and uh, having never been a sporty person this came as a bit of a surprise to me but um, I find it's a real stress buster actually and um, yeah if I'm stuck with a, with a with a writing problem that I just I just can't sort out I go out for a run and quite often I'll find that the answer to the problem comes to me. <laughs> Well, I'd always loved writing, creative writing at school, um, and uh, I got sort of sidetracked along the way, I think, as you as you do, and ended up in a very different career, which involved writing, but um, much more kind of factually based writing. And I stopped that job when I had my children, uh, because it wasn't very family friendly, the hours were very long, and um, it was really then that I went back to um, the creative side of writing, I remembered how much I'd enjoyed it and how much it had meant to me and um, decided to give it a go again, um, had to pluck up the courage to do that, it was, um, it was quite a difficult thing to start after many years of not having written, um, but once I did I really, really enjoyed it and took it more and more seriously uh, until I got to the point where I felt I could try to write a book. 
Um, well, I'd say on the writing side of things that the most important thing is to write about something that you really care about um, rather than writing about what you think you should write about. Um, it's really important that you that you love what you write because otherwise there's, there's no way you're going to get to the end of what you're trying to write. Um, and also if you don't love it then it's unlikely that anyone else is going to love it. Um, stick with it when it gets difficult because it does get really difficult for everybody and I think it's really important to know that when you're starting out that the fact that you get stuck doesn't mean that you can't do it because everybody, even the kind of greatest authors, do get stuck. Um, and on the practical side I would say um, it's really useful to know as much as you can about um, the publishing industry and um, and the, the kind of practical side of it when, it, when you've got to that point. Um, and to um, join up with other writers as well. There are a lot of organisations and online kind of um, networks uh, that mean you can sort of hook up with other writers and um, that kind of shared experience and support is really valuable, I think. Um, so, yes, I think those would be my top tips.